you may have heard of a fun, epic lake activity called the Blob. And you know what? I, it's as scary as it sounds, at least it is to me. If you've ever seen some of the epic videos from our own kids and students going to summer camp, being launched in the air off of this inflated tube, landing in the waters of the lake, it looks epic, it looks fun, but I'm here to tell you, it hurts. I experienced it only three times. And I remember after the third time, I said to myself, I can choose whether or not I do this or not, and I'm choosing to never do it again. There's that old saying that goes like this, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I'm not even gonna argue against that. I think that does provide some wisdom, but this doesn't always land well in relationships. When we say never again, in relationships, we might be creating a barrier, keeping us from going deeper. Uh, here's what I've learned to be true. In any good, close, long-term relationship, pain is almost always inevitable. We're, we're gonna hurt feelings. Our feelings are gonna be hurt. We're going to miscommunicate. And that's gonna happen in our lives as long as we're dealing with human beings. Now, one disclaimer that I wanna make very, very clear the one thing you're not gonna hear us say at all today is that God wants us to be a doormat. You know, when it comes to things like physical abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, any form of abuse, that is not something that God desires for us and that we're not just, just supposed to throw down all of our healthy boundaries and just allow something like that to happen. However, on the other extreme, pain avoidance can rob you of authentic relationship. I believe many human beings miss out on rich, deep connection and community because the moment they experience some kind of pain, they simply bail out. We bail out. And if you keep doing this on repeat, at the very best, you might be guarded or cautious, but it can cause you to be withdrawn or controlling in your relationships. And that's why we wanna focus on this next barrier to connection, community, and friendship breaking through never again. More than you might realize, you are you have said never again because of some pain that has happened in your past. Because of that, you're missing out on connection. You have withdrawn or you've guarded or you've controlled. And when the going gets tough, when the pain shows up, you parachute away from that moment where you could push through and experience deep connection, authentic relationship and intimacy with another person in your life. We've been looking at so many biblical examples of these barriers, and I think the best one that talks about this barrier is a guy named Joseph. Now, his backstory is kind of sad. Uh, when you look at everything that he went through, his story begins in Genesis chapter 37. In a moment, I'm just gonna read to you one little passage near the culmination of his story in Genesis 45. But when you look at the beginning of his story, you find that he's got 10 older brothers who frankly despise him. And if you were to read the full story, and I encourage you to do so, do so, you'll see that, well, maybe you can relate to them too. He was dad's favorite. Dad made him a special coat that was really nice. He wore it around. God gave him the ability to interpret dreams. As it turns out, some of those dreams, the point of the dreams were, hey, I'm better than you guys are. And so, yeah, there was a little jealousy, a little resentment, but they took it to a whole new level. They ended up taking their brother Joseph and throwing him in a pit and then changing their minds and saying, you know what, let's get something out of this. And they sold him into slavery. It's interesting to think about this, but we know about the Israelites being in slavery in Egypt and Moses leading them away. But the reason they're even in Egypt in the first place is because of Joseph's story, because his own brothers sold him into slavery to Egypt. As it turns out, some good things did happen from that point on. Joseph rose to power, ended up being the second-hand man to a leader in Egypt named Potiphar. But as it turns out, his wife accused Joseph of coming on to her. And because of that, he ends up in jail, Joseph does. But then because while he was in jail, he remained faithful, interpreted some dreams and obeyed God, he ends up once again in power, but this time he's the second-hand man to Pharaoh, the leader of all of Egypt. And God uses Joseph's ability to interpret dreams, Joseph's 
impart for him and wisdom and insight and abilities and gifts to actually begin to lead Egypt through a terrible famine. Well, it's because of that famine that ultimately Joseph's brothers come to see him. They don't know it's him. They, they believe he's probably dead. They have no idea where he is, but they go seeking food. They're starving. They need survival. So they travel from their father's house and they end up coming before Joseph. Joseph does not give up his identity and ends up doing a few things to sort of uh, be investigative. He toys with them a little bit, but he's trying to see how's my little brother doing? How's my dad doing? And once he finds out how well they're doing, there's this huge epic moment that's the culmination of all these terrible things that his brother did to him and all the things that God did in the wake of that where Joseph reveals his identity. And I'm gonna be honest with you, when I get to this point in Joseph's story, I've watched enough Marvel videos and good versus bad plots that I'm like, here we go. Joseph, lower the boom. You can, you can shove it in their face. You can tell them you are terrible people. You can get your revenge on them. But we see Joseph do something incredibly different. Let me read for you from Genesis chapter 45. In verse four, it says, So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me you and your children and your children's children and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. The revenge of a grudge was right there for the taking for Joseph, and he didn't do it. And I believe that's because Joseph perceived his past hardships through redemptive eyes. And that's hard to do. And here's the thing that we want to share with you today that I need to share with myself today is that I believe that we've been hurt before. We've been burned before. And when we internalize that in our lives, it can affect our relationships. And, and if we don't do something about that, we may settle for holding on to a grudge. We may settle for a barrier that exists that prevents us from pushing through and experiencing intimacy, experiencing a connection that could exist if we would just be willing to look at our past and, and look at it through redemptive eyes that maybe, just maybe, even though that was painful and that was difficult, God was doing something bigger. And maybe that something bigger has the potential to allow you to have intimacy in a friendship with community, with, with a family member, with someone that you thought never again once upon a time. Maybe, just maybe, that was wrong. Maybe, just maybe, God can redeem what you experienced to allow you to go deeper to give you greater connection, greater community with the people he has put in your path. We can start having real life-giving relationships again by forgiving those who have hurt us in the past and loving others enough to give them our trust. I like both of those phrases in there. It's easy to look at Joseph's story and say, the key to him was to forgive what his brothers did to him. And I think that's true, but it goes beyond that. We can forgive, but we can still take the pain that we've experienced and say, well, I just don't want to go through that again. Therefore, I'm going to withhold things. And that's why we have to be able to love someone enough to give them our trust. I'm reminded of what it says in 1 Corinthians. In verses 4 through 7, it has a couple of phrases in it about love that sometimes are surprising. It actually says that love keeps no record of wrongs. And I know that you, and if you're like me, we tell people we love them. I, I throw that phrase and that sentence around very, very well. But I wonder if sometimes, even though I might tell someone I love them, if I don't wipe away everything they've done that hurts me or that rubs me the wrong way. And I hold a little bit onto that. And I say, you know what? Didn't like that, 
So I'm going to withdraw a little bit. I'm going to be more guarded, not only with them, but maybe other people so that I don't get hurt again. Another phrase in that passage in 1 Corinthians 13 simply says, love always trusts. That's always been intriguing to me because I'm like, hmm, do I really believe that? Do I believe that love always trusts? Uh, when you think about it, I think about marriages, I think about my closest relationships. At the end of the day, if I can't trust them, I'm going to be guarded, I'm going to withdraw, there's going to be a wall put between us. The, at the end of the day, in order to really love someone and have a relationship with them, we have to give trust. And if you've been hurt in any way in the past, this could be a problem. You may be struggling giving trust to someone. You may be struggling treating people as a safe person to share your thoughts, your feelings with, because you've been hurt in your past. And you at some point in your life said, I'm never going to experience that again. Therefore, I'm just going to stay over here and you stay over there. A distance is created, a bubble is formed, a wall is erected, and you're missing out on the intimacy that you could have with someone else. Could it be that the biggest barrier to the friendships that you wish you had is this subtle thing inside of you that's avoiding pain, that just doesn't want to get hurt again? And, and I just want you to know today that, hey, We've all been there to some extent, but it's when we're willing to push through and let God redeem whatever happened to us in our past that we get to experience this kind of community. And it bears saying that, aren't you glad? I know I'm glad. Aren't you glad that God doesn't operate the same way we do? That He pushes through the pain to still love us. I'm reminded of what it says in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Here's God's message to you and to me. The pain of the cross is worth getting to be with you forever. Think about that. The pain of the cross is worth being with you forever. Everything that we celebrate about the cross, the gospel, what Jesus did, bearing that cross, stepping out of that tomb, he did all of it to have a chance to be with you and to be with me forever. And he went through so much pain to get there. But he pushed through. Even when we still didn't believe, even when we still didn't trust, even when we ran from him, he pushed through. Now I know we're not Jesus. <laughs> we may try to emulate him in many ways, but uh, in our best efforts, we're not fully like Jesus. We are not as redemptive as he is. But I believe that the reason that we have God's word by our side to show us how to live our lives, to how to have relationships, is to point us to what love really looks like. Love doesn't avoid pain. It sticks through the pain. It pushes through it and allows it to be redeemed for the good. And I don't know what past hurts you've been facing. I don't know uh, what people may have done to hurt you in the past that you might still be hanging on to. Whatever that might be, I encourage you today to don't settle for that barrier. Don't settle for less than. There are real friendships, real community, real relationships available to you if you're willing to take a step and say, I'm ready to break through that barrier. So how do we break through this barrier of never again? We've seen Joseph's story. We looked at how God uh, doesn't avoid pain to love us. And we know that we're not supposed to keep record of wrongs if we love someone. How do we actually do this? I got five things I want to share with you. The first one is accept God's pain enduring love for you. I think that not everyone does this. I think they're able to push through past pain without God's help, but it sure helps to have his help. And that might be the one thing that flips the switch for you to just remember, man, God pushed through pain to love you. How can we do the same for others? Secondly, identify past hurts you may be hanging on to. To maybe do a little bit of an inventory of your heart, of your past, like, why do I withhold? Why do I stand back? Why am I more guarded? Why do I try to control the relationships around me? Why do I get so close, but then pull back? Right when things are about to get a little bit hard, I back away. Why do I do that? Could it be that you got burned in the past and you've not really identified what that is? Maybe with God's help, praying to Him about it, you can identify what happened. Thirdly, ask God to help you forgive 
and let go of past hurts. Ask him to help you do that. I'd love to say that's automatic, you know, hey, God forgives us so we can just say, I forgive others and move on. But forgiveness sometimes is a journey and we need his help to do it. And probably the bigger the hurt and the closer the relationship in that hurt, the longer it might take to work through forgiveness. But with God's help, you can do it. And I can tell you this, this is non-negotiable. You must forgive. You must forgive for your own sake. To hang on to those hurts is only going to poison the way that you interact with others. It's only going to hurt yourself. Uh, a grudge poisons the person holding it, not the one that they're hurt by in the past. So with God's help, work towards forgiveness. Next, confess to someone when you feel like bailing. Now, this is a very difficult one because I'm not talking about, hey, I'm going to tell my friend that I'm thinking about bailing on this other relationship. No, I'm, I'm saying, what if when you notice you're getting closer to someone, but something is wanting you to pull away, you find yourself wanting withdrawal, why don't you acknowledge that to that person? And, and by telling that person, like, for some reason, I feel like I've kind of hit a wall here, and I don't know what's going on, let's talk about that. Maybe even pray about that together. That's a pretty awesome thing to do, but most of us just don't do it. At least consider it. With God's help, might you be able to have a conversation with someone that you're tempted to put a wall between because you don't know why, but you're feeling a little bit scared to move closer. Confess that to someone. Say, I feel like bailing, but I don't want to. Let's talk about that. And I got one more for you. Ask God to help you see your circumstances and your relationships through His redemptive eyes. Man, I'm telling you, relationships are messy. Life is messy. And if we live it long enough, we're going to be wronged and we're going to be the ones that do the wrong. We're going to get hurt or we're going to be the ones that sometimes do the hurting. And when you are the one that does the hurting, that's when you realize, man, I want forgiveness. I want another chance. And so if that's true, you can relate to that. Then I encourage you to think, well, then I need to do that for the other past hurts in my life. Everything I've gone through, God, help me to see that through redemptive eyes. Help me to see how you've used that. God never wastes a pain. He will take any pain we go through and turn it into a purpose. He did that for Joseph. He will absolutely do it for each and every one of us. And the one thing I know for sure, when we are dealing with a relationship with someone and we're feeling the pain, we're feeling the sting, but we push through it with them together, those are the relationships that become intimate, close friendships that will last forever. So it is worth every effort to push through the barrier of never again so that you can experience the friendships, the intimacy that God wants for you. Hey, I know I'm on video, you're there live in person, but I would love it if we could just take time to pray about this together. Um, I know that this is a barrier that I would want to admit and say, yeah, I don't really struggle with this too much. I don't think of myself as a grudge holder. But when I have analyzed why sometimes I hold back, I know that I play it too safe sometimes. And because of that, I know this is for me as much as it is for anyone else. And so I encourage you to pray for your pastor. And I would love to pray for all of us right now, asking God's help to break through this barrier. So bow with me as we pray. Father, I come before you and I just want to thank you for not bailing on us. Thank you for the pain you've endured to love us, to walk with us. Father, I pray that you help us to see what past hurts are still residing in our hearts and preventing us from intimacy and friendship. Help us to identify them. Father, give us the ability and the courage to forgive. How could we not forgive? out of all the times you've forgiven us. And Father, I pray that by your power, we could push through this barrier and experience greater community, that we would see marriages grow, familial relationships mended, and friendships born because we're willing to break through this barrier never again. Help us to do this, we pray, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ.